welcome to Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano, and on today's program, we chat with Ron Yacobucci from the Quincy Workforce Development Department. Learn all about the job market coming up in the new year. First, though, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, sunshine, a few clouds out there. It's 56 degrees already. Might hit 60 later on this afternoon with a mix of sun and clouds and a pretty mild night tonight. Temperatures will drop off only into the mid 40s and the last day of 2022 looks a little wet, probably not till the afternoon. The showers moving in after some morning clouds and the rain will continue, unfortunately, into some New Year's Eve celebrations, but it'll be mild at least. It will be warm, low only 50 degrees. The first day of 2023 looks partly cloudy and mild with temperatures in the low 50s and kind of a carbon copy for Monday with a mix of sun and clouds. Highs Monday in the low 50s actually it looks pretty mild into the first half of next week. Again, partly sunny, 56 in Quincy right now. Checking the news for you today, a Dorchester teenager is undergoing a mental health evaluation after police say he tried to rape a woman that he followed from the Wollaston MBTA station in Quincy last Friday. 18-year-old Gustavo Woodward is charged with attacking that woman at Woodbine and Cushing Street just after 1 a.m. last Friday morning. The woman did manage to get away. Woodward was arrested at the Quincy Center T station after getting on a train at Wollaston. The woman was taken to a local hospital for evaluation. Woodward is being held without bail until his next court date. Seven men have been indicted for the murder of a Quincy man at his Quincy apartment complex back in August. Four of the suspects are in custody. Three of them are still at large. Cornell Bell, Dwayne Harper, and Sheik Ramos were recently arrested. Dante Clark from Brockton was arrested back in September. The police are still searching for Walter Batista, Clayton Rodriguez, and Derek Miranda. Two women are also being sought for misleading that investigation. All the suspects will face charges for the shooting death of Jordan Wiggins, whose body was found in the parking area of the Elevation Apartments in West Quincy on August 18th. Soon, Quincy College students will have the opportunity to train on the very latest X-ray and other scanning technology used in the major hospitals and healthcare institutions across the country. Construction is underway on a new radiology lab at the college's Seville Building on Seville Avenue in Quincy Center. During a recent groundbreaking ceremony, the provost, Servit Yatin, said students who complete this program will be eligible for good paying radiology jobs that are desperately needed. We spoke to local health care providers, other colleges, and conducted site visits. We learned how important radiology technologies are to the healthcare system, especially after the pandemic. We learned how in demand and essential this profession is. In just two months, we received over 20 applicants and accepted the first cohort of qualified, competent, and caring students who will start their education in radiology technology in less than a month. These students will begin 77 credits five semester program taking courses and completing clinical hours in radiologic equipment operations, production and evaluation of diagnostic images, patient care skills, and safety. And upon graduation, students will be eligible for the national certification exam as Quincy College is now an approved institution by the American Registry of Radiologic Technologists, ARRT. So the new lab will be ready next May, but students can enroll in the program in January and begin classes in some temporary space at the President's Place campus. City of Quincy will receive a $355,000 state grant to help fund electric school buses. That funding, part of a $100 million state allocation announced recently to help Massachusetts lower greenhouse gas emissions by the years 2030 and become net zero by 2050. During a recent press conference about those grants held at Marymount Park here in Quincy, State Senator John Keenan said the fund, which will also help electrify the MBTA's bus fleet, 
will greatly improve the quality of life for residents. Uh, it's buses. And the MBTA is making great strides to make sure that its fleet is electrified. And we're very fortunate that here in the city of Quincy, we're going to have a bus facility that will support that effort. And then you look at this bus behind us. And as the commissioner mentioned, it's just not the fact that it's battery operated and what that saves and how that helps the, gl the global environment. But these are the buses that run up and down the streets in the neighborhoods of this city and cities all across the Commonwealth with similar buses. The people on those streets, whether it's a T-bus or a school bus, have for years lived with that exhaust and the impacts of that on their health and the impacts on the environmental justice communities all across the Commonwealth has been very significant. This is an important step forward to help our neighborhoods. Some of the funding also comes from the Federal American Rescue Plan and will be used to electrify garbage collection trucks, expand e-bike availability, and support the purchase of electric vehicles. Going into the new year, Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch says that he wants to revisit the plan for the city to hire a person to focus on issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion. A mayoral task force recommended that a special liaison be hired in the mayor's office after the city council had previously approved a new department for diversity issues. Mayor said that a new department was not needed, but only one candidate applied for the liaison position. Uh, so it could be that the position is doesn't pay well enough uh, in this marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, it, that could be one of the reasons, but uh, that's what that was the range the committee recommended. So. We'll revisit that with the committee, um, but I'll tell you, I, I um, you know, I, I said from the beginning, I, I respect the wishes of the committee and the council, um, but you know, the city continues to move forward. The city continues to uh, do the right thing. Uh, we're a diverse city, um, and uh, this the city is a safe city. We've had some issues, as we just talked about, uh, but overall, for 102,000 people next to the city of Boston. Uh, I think we're the safest city, uh, in, at least in the top ten, if not beyond, population-wise, uh, in Massachusetts. So we have a lot to be proud of, and the uh, school system does great work, our libraries do great work, uh, and we'll continue to do that. Um, so if we, hopefully we'll succeed, we'll, we'll see, we're going to uh, repackage this. It may require uh, additional dollars towards the salary of it. Uh, we're, we're looking at that now. Koch budgeted $75,000 for the new position, says more money may have to be added to attract more qualified candidates. Interfaith Social Services of Quincy coming off two months of some whirlwind activity to help needy families across the South Shore. This year, Interfaith distributed more than 1,500 Thanksgiving meals to nearly 4,000 residents and also distributed more than 4,000 gifts to children served by their food pantry. Interfaith's Executive Director Rick Doan says they served more than 100 additional children this year and their help for the holidays gift program. He says the food pantry also continues to see increased demand. Their recent Feed the Hungry Gala raised over $390,000 to stock their food pantry for the winter. Interfaith is already gearing up for their Joy for Children initiative in January by collecting items for their spring bunny baskets for Easter. Interfaith marked its 75th anniversary this past year. That is our check of news coming up. Ron Yakabuchi of the Quincy Workforce Development Department will join us next. Welcome back. I thought kind of a nice way to wrap up uh, the old year and welcome the new year was to talk a little bit about how the workforce here on the South Shore is uh, shaping up and what we can look forward to in the future. And who better to tell us about that than the <laughs> director of the city's <laughs> workforce <laughs> development department, Ron Yakabuchi. Good to see you, Ron. Thank you, Joe. And uh, let me first say Happy New Year. Thank to, you. And a healthy new year to you, to the folks at uh, QATV, the folks that are listening right now. So Absolutely. Happy, Same to you healthy and to yours. New year. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. what it's all about, right? Yeah. For us, it may be a roller coaster ride. You but think hopefully. so? <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, More than yeah. it already has been? Uh, well, we'll see what's coming. Okay. Yeah, yeah we'll see what's coming. But, um, but workforce development has been a big issue the past few years. Yes. Um, that includes not just the availability of workers, which has been talked about quite a bit, 
but it's you know reaching those diversity, uh, equity, inclusion, and accessibility goals. Mm -hmm. That's another big uh, topic in workforce development, as well as ensuring the people, the workers, have the right skills to fit the new jobs that are coming on board. So that's been a challenge. Um, and 2022 has is, is been a, a challenging year for workforce development because of the record on inflation we've had. Yes. Because of the general economic uncertainty that's out there in the country, in the region. Um, that There's also this great return to office debate that's going on. So that's created, you know, some... Uh, some challenges as as well as the shrinking workforce. So and, and which and we're feeling that that's caused by declining birth rate, uh, aging population. Uh, we're talking about a drop in legal immigration, which has in the past fueled uh, that workforce, and just generally people leaving Massachusetts. Yes. Uh, fourth highest in the country in states, population decline really? this past year. So um, and that's from a state that has a relatively small population to begin with, right? <laughs> yeah, but probably, yeah. yeah. But so as a result of the labor shortages, you know, you, you, there's been major concerns in health care, um, construction, hospitality, retail, you know, that, that have been driving um, uh, difficult situations yeah, with those because, businesses. But to look, to look at it on paper, yeah. you know, the unemployment rate is under 4%. Yeah. So you say great everybody's working everything's fine yeah, yeah. in Quincy it's it actually it's under three yeah. percent right now uh, but it doesn't reflect the participation rate which right. I always talk about and those are the folks that because the unemployment rate reflects the people that are collecting unemployment insurance okay so you have to look at that participation rate those are the people that aren't participating in the workforce um, and, and, a, and a significant factor why they're not participating is because a majority of them have, have retired or they're sick or they're, di or they're disabled. Um, you know, we, we have uh, the, the baby boomer generation, which yep. I'm a part of, okay, yep. uh, has exited the labor market because during the pandemic they just decided to leave early. Yes. So, so you know, we're losing that and we need to be creative about, at both at the federal, state, and local level, about creating and changing policies that are going to attract those people back into the workforce. Hmm. Uh, like one example I can give is just relative to Social Security. You know, you, you're limited in terms of how much you can make before you start getting, uh, it affects your, the amount of money you get right. in Social Security. Right, you're kind of so, penalized so, for working, basically. So, so we need to change those, yeah. those rules and, and regulations, and I could go on and on about others, but uh, that's, that's something that needs to be, be addressed so we could hopefully get some of these mature workers back into the workforce, because I'm sure they could use more money and they could use uh, a job that uh, gives them purpose and, 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 and you know, and contributes. Um, and, you know, they've got a tremendous work e ethic and we'd like to see that back in, okay. in, in participating too. So, you know, we've got to do things that are going to get drive more people back into the workforce to meet the needs, the demands that the employers are having. Um, you know, another contributing factor to locally to the workforce shrinking is that people can't afford to live in the region. It's a, it's a huge issue. <laughs> you know? yeah, and the governor and, talked about it not too long ago. And actually. as a result, you know, housing now has become a real issue in the South Shore. Yeah. and this is it's it's a serious need for more workforce housing is what where we need to go more workforce housing because if people are leaving the region because they can't afford to work here we're training people right now for jobs that that don't allow them to to live in they this region because they don't pay enough yeah, exactly there, so yeah. so unless we fix that you're going to see more of an exodus from the region it's going to hurt businesses again mm. it's going to you know uh, uh, make it difficult for them to find workers and that just is going to be a domino effect that's going to create a, a, a potential serious issue for for our economy in the region and we want to avoid that yeah so. we've seen um, some private companies step up and offer housing yeah you know, yeah we need to get housing. creative about right. things yeah yeah but that kind of harkens back to the the old days of you know when factory uh, jobs yep. 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 Yeah. We're the main <laughs> factor in the in the workforce, you know, we'll provide you your own house if you come work at our factory. Yeah. Yeah. Are we going back to that? Do you think? Well, I mean, there are. We work at, at connecting job seekers and employers, yeah. right? And we provide training to help with that and um, and and other things. But it's not just getting somebody in a job. It's also dealing with their transportation issues, yeah. their housing issues, their daycare issues. I mean, I can go on. Right. Um, you know, so, so you've got to look at it holistically, right? So you've got to be addressing everything, the whole picture. And to the extent that employers could get creative about meeting certain things, yes. they could be getting workers. Another big issue is working remotely. A lot of folks don't yes. want to go back to work because they love working remotely now. 
and uh, and that's another challenge with with um, you know with uh, trying to fill uh, jobs yeah. and fill positions. Well, I think the state just announced earlier this week that they're eliminating like half of the office space that I they know. leased you know, for for state workers. Know. And, you know, know, right in downtown Boston. It, so correct. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a problem. So I mean, so the labor market locally. So for example, we could take a quick maybe a uh, snapshot of what's going on sure. in Quincy. Sure, yeah. Um, so, you know, we have, according to the census, okay. 100,544 residents right now. Okay. Um, and and we're, we're very proud of our contribution to that because uh, the folks that worked at the census were housed in our office. Oh. We helped them recruit people to go out there and take the oh, census. I didn't know that. And we also did training. We provided uh, space for, for those workers to be trained so okay. they can go out there and take the census. So it was really important to meet that goal, and, uh, and we did it. 50-50 <laughs> almost, male and female. Oh, really? Oh, 50-50, yeah, yeah, which is interesting. 30% of that is um, uh, Quincy residents that identify themselves as Asian. Sure. And, and that's compared to 7% state average. So you can see we have a significant population. 57% identify themselves as, um, as white, non-Latino. Uh, so also in that same um, data, we have slightly over 20% of the Quincy residents claim they can't speak English very well. Over 20%. So as a result okay. of that, you know, our mass hire, we're branded as mass hire career yeah. centers, right? Yes. Uh, established pathways to the ESL training, and we also gave these folks more access to mass hire resources for non-speaking uh, English um, job seekers. So we're trying to address that need working okay. with our partners because that's a problem. You know, uh, we can get you a better job if we can make sure we can you could speak English, and basics, you have those yeah. computer skills. Those are the kind of the two things that we're sort of kind of lacking in. Um, Quincy's labor force right now is at 55,500 people. 55,500 people. Quincy residents are working. The unemployment rate continues to decline. Like a year ago, it was at 4.2 percent. Mm -hmm. Now it's at uh, at 2.7 wow. percent. Wow! So okay. it's come down, um, and 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 uh, you know that's a good thing. But again, it goes back to that participation yes. rate, where you still have people, people that aren't dropped off the roles, dropped basically. off the roles yeah. altogether. Okay. Uh, Quincy has about 3,800 uh, businesses. 45% um, of these are designed as either healthcare or social assistance uh, businesses, which is uh, interesting. And the average weekly rate, rate in Quincy uh, wage rate is $1,575. Okay. So we're in a pretty solid okay. position, but you know, and, and where are the jobs? So there are presently over 1,200 jobs orders that we're taking in Quincy alone. In Quincy alone. And you're looking at vacancies. Openings. openings yeah, okay. openings. And these vacancies are for every level of educational attainment. So you've got employers of all sizes, State Street, Granite Telecommunication, Quincy Public Schools um, are actively seeking employees. And it, it you know, includes categories like health care, finance, insurance, retail um, sectors. Um, so you also have um, what kind of skills are, are in demand. Mm -hmm. And those include customer service, IT, project management, budgeting, sales, quality assurance, and teaching. But the biggest one is customer service. Mm -hmm. We're finding that in almost every instance where there's a job posting, customer service is a skill that employers are, are requiring. So what kind of jobs are these, Ron, that, that we're talking about? So these you know, front-facing mm -hmm. retail jobs? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, so, so we're trying to meet that demand, yeah. uh, and some of the things that we're doing you know, in the career center, you know, when you're looking at what, what's, what are our choices for 2023? Yeah. Where are we going, yeah. right? So, so and, and, and we're going in, in, in a world where it's almost like a bad choice between do we have more inflation or do we have a recession? So what are we going to choose? <laughs> and well, I know you want to choose neither one, right? Right, obviously, so, yeah. But so, so, so we're balancing that, and, and how that comes out is going to affect, you know, how we're doing our work locally. Yes. Because it's going to impact you know, the kinds of things that we need to be well, doing. Well, to respond really to what's going on, right? In respond to what's yeah. going on, yeah. So one of the things is a lot of people aren't coming into our career center anymore. So one of the initiatives we're launching in 2023 is to create a mobile career center. Go to them. Go to them. Okay. Correct. Go to the shopping malls, the town halls, ah, the schools, okay. wherever people are to try to, you know, <clears throat> promote the the opportunities that are there it's a great idea. and to maybe kind of increase that everything else is brought rate. to us right our dinner our <laughs> i mean everything is on demand i know now, our, so. our youth team is very interested in using that because sometimes it's hard to get the young people to, to travel yes. you know we serve 22 communities right yeah. so so it's hard to, for them to connect and if we can go to them in many instances uh go to employers in terms of promoting uh, uh job fairs and that sort of thing okay. so we want to be more mobile we want to create more access points around the region so that people can be more aware of what we do and 
and take advantage of the kinds of things that I'm talking about yes. here in terms of the data, the jobs, the opportunities that are out there. Um, one of the other things we want to address is, is, a, uh, is a potential partnership with the Disney Institute. Which I never which even knew there was such a thing. There is, a, there is such a thing. So yes, Disney yeah. has their own school. They have their own school and okay. they're out there promoting customer service. Okay. So what better, uh, uh, you know, uh, what, what better than Disney to be teaching us customer mm -hmm, service. Mm -hmm. So, so we, 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 like I said before, we found that that was the number one uh, uh, skill that people were looking for. So we'd like to be able to put something together that we could offer to employers, we could offer to job seekers to build that skill. And we're going to be working hopefully with the Disney Institute if we could put that together to, uh, to make that happen. And I think it'll make a big difference in, in what's happening. Right at the Career Center? That's Right at the Career Center. In yeah. Quincy Center, that's where will happen? Okay. Yeah. So we're at 1515 Hancock Street. Right. For yeah. those of you who are listening and, and uh, want to come in and, and take advantage of our services, open Monday through Thursday. Friday is a remote day. So we'll okay. take we're, we're practicing that. So you're uh, falling yeah. into that. We're same falling into that. Yeah, routine. we are. Yeah. We okay. are. Yeah, and, and we are there 8:30 to 4:30. We only take a break from 12 to 1. Um, you know, so folks can get lunch. Okay. And uh, so you know, we encourage people to do that. We encourage people to to plug in by calling that number 617-745-4000. Yep. Um, you know, we've got uh, or go on our website masshireSS.com. Sure. Um, we've got you know really some. Some, everybody that works at our center is very passionate, very committed, very dedicated, you know, connect with us. I always us. call and it the best kept secret. Best kept secret. That, that these <laughs> services are free. Yeah, free. Exactly. <laughs> well, I, we say they're at no cost. Yeah. Yeah. When you say something's well, free, it doesn't feel like somebody it has, has to much pay value. For it. Somebody has to. Yeah. It's your tax dollars at work. Right. Yeah. And take advantage of so it. So you've sent because there are opportunities there, and we do want to help people. And we have some tremendous training opportunities that we're promoting. Uh, one right now with EMT uh, through Quincy College. Okay. And the other is uh, we're doing this uh, CTI which is the career technical initiatives that was part of the governor's workforce skills cabinet okay. and uh, you know there's opportunities there we're also trying to get into uh, something called incumbent worker training uh, to promote opportunities to lift people up in their present jobs okay. by, by giving them more training, more skills, as well as on-the-job training. So sometimes they might not be a really a good fit for a particular individual with an employer, mm -hmm. but they could learn on the job, and we would support that financially. And that those are the kinds of things that we're trying to advance as we go into 2023, which will hopefully make a difference given what we're dealing with. Yeah, so. yeah. You know, it's funny, you talked about the older workers coming back into the workforce. Yeah. Do you think that we need training programs to give them new skills in the kind of the new yeah. workforce? Yeah. World, if you well, will. the yeah. computer skills. Right. Is, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we, we have a lot of um, we we have we run uh, uh, career center seminars every week. We usually get about ninety people in wow. to, 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 to to participate. That's the kind of the gateway to get into our services to become a member. Take that orientation. Okay. We find that a number of them. Uh, our, our mature workers are not uh, don't have the computer skills, so yep. they physically have to come in, and we put them on a computer yep. and we work with them okay. instead of doing it virtually. Yeah. So that's a big, big. Difference. Yeah, because I think that'd be intimidating yeah. if you've never used one before, yeah. you know, and then to have to use it every single and day. Yeah, every single day. Yeah. yeah, but it, that that's where we are. Right. <laughs> so I, I don't question <laughs> yeah. just about everything. Yeah. 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 I mean, even uh, an auto mechanic needs to have yeah. computer yeah. skills. Yeah. 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 I talk about the future of work. You know, we were talking about that before the pandemic, yeah. and it was about you know the robots are coming. How yeah. do we adapt and adjust to that yes. environment, right? Then it's the future of work. The pandemic's here. How do we adapt and adjust to that right. environment? And now it's the future of work when we're challenged about finding people to work mm. and, and, and solving those kinds of issues that I talked about before that will hopefully make a difference. Yeah, you, so. you, you talk about people leaving the state. I think I read something yeah. like 8,000 people just in the past yeah. year alone. Where are they going and why they go are they going? Florida. Florida? <laughs> Is that where they're going? Number one in really? the country in terms of attracting people. Uh, yeah, really? Florida, yeah, yeah. And what's the attraction? Is it uh, Disney World? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, Aside I, I from mean, warm I, winters, I, I, I would imagine the the, the climate. I, you know, it, yeah. yeah. I mean, you could say I don't want to get into the politics of uh, what's going oh, on. Oh no, no, I, I meant for a job opportunity. <laughs> and whether that's attracting people down there, I don't know. Right. But uh, but yeah, I think you know it's a, it's a place that in the past you know was always a place to go for. Yeah to get that warm weather, especially in the wintertime with the snowbirds, you know, so, yeah, so people are going to Florida. To, but not just to retire now, right? To, uh, to work. To work, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts about uh, going to Florida? No, not right now, anyway. <laughs> okay. The new administration is uh, going to be sworn in next week. Yes, yeah. Uh, how does that affect the, the uh, I've sector? been on a transition uh, group uh, on workforce development, and we've come up with a position paper. I mean, we, we, we obviously are doing our jobs, but we could do things better. Mm. And we've come up with very specific uh, recommendations for the new administration okay. to consider uh, on how we could do things better. Uh, and uh, and hopefully, 
um, we'll be putting people in the right positions that are going to carry out those, <laughs> re re you know, things that we need to do to do things better. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So that's all ongoing right now, and we'll see where it goes. <laughs> uh, jo a job fair still a thing? Do you yeah. Still, you yeah. Okay. I mean, a lot of them are being done virtually. They d they do them also, also uh, statewide now. Oh. And there was one that was done New England wide. Wow. It gets a little confusing, but um, and I'm always in favor of doing something locally because you have a better control over the businesses that you're plugging in yes. and the job seekers you're plugging in. Sometimes when you participate in those big, you know, thousand people kinds of uh, you get lost, in the, you get lost yeah. in the show. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to manage. So we like to, you know, we participate, but we like to control it locally because I think we get a better uh, result. So. Happy, healthy hey. new year, Ron. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. yeah. Just enough time to check the forecast for you for the rest of the day. Today, it'll be uh, nice, partly sunny, mild temperatures in the mid, maybe upper 50s, uh, maybe 60 degrees in some places this afternoon. And only down to the mid 40s this evening. Looks like a very mild uh, holiday weekend coming up. Tomorrow, look a little wet. It'll be cloudy in the morning, some rain in the afternoon, and then some rain for New Year's Eve as well. But look at the temperatures. <laughs> 50 degrees on New Year's Eve. A lot of folks can remember when it was 5. And New Year's Day looks nice. Sun and clouds, low to mid 50s and about the same thing again on Monday. Thanks again to Ron Yakabuchi for joining us today. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. We are off on Monday for the New Year holiday. Join us again next Friday. Folks from Manit Community Health Center will be here to help us keep those New Year's resolutions. Meantime, check our website, <laughs> qatv.org. Our latest programs are there. There's news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and a lot more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a very happy and healthy New Year.